So a uh, reminder as always that the first step of meditation is to turn off your cell phone. And we'll come into our meditation posture. For those of you just joining us, uh, I've been doing a series, uh, a recorded series here of different types of meditations. We usually start with breath focus. So we'll do a pretty brief breath focus tonight. And if you're not into the breath, uh, the goal of the intro part here is just two simple things. Turn your attention inward and let go of at least the most superficial distractions. And I like to remind people here every week that uh, there's this great benefit of urban meditation, which is it's pretty loud here. Uh, there'll be lots of noise from the street and the upstairs neighbors. And I like to use the outside sounds like a mindfulness bell. It's really easy to get lost in your own thoughts. It's actually pretty hard to get lost in the music of cars driving by and the TV show they're listening to upstairs. So when you notice your attention's gone to something external, awesome. Very easy to drop it and come back. Next, we're going to bring the attention to the body. And walk us through a body scan. We'll spend the whole time there. Bring your attention first to your feet. You'll feel the uh, obvious sensations of the pressure of your feet against the ground or the chair or the pillow. Wink socks, you'll feel your sock. You'll certainly feel the temperature. And then as you soak your attention into your feet, you start getting deeper sensations, sensations within the foot. Often they don't have easy names. And let go of the feet and bring your attention to the lower part of your legs. If you're finding it's really hard to do the legs together, it's okay to just pick one. If you're able to put your attention on the lower part of both legs, do that. And bring your attention to your knees. And it's quite amazing if you know if you try focusing on one knee and then the other. This is such a small part of the body, you know, percentage-wise, definitely a single-digit number. And there's so much going on. Noticing how the inside of your knee feels different from the outside, the left feels different from the right, the left side feels different from the right side. Inside feels different from outside. And if you get any images of what your knee looks like, go lower. Those images are usually going to feel like they're around your eyes. So we don't want to shut the image off. Just bring the attention lower so that you're in the actual sensation of your knee, not the picture of it. And then we'll come next to the thighs.
Uh, external sensations tend to come easiest. So uh, pressure is probably the first, clothing is the second. We can look for these internal sensations. Bring your attention next into your pelvis. Well, pressure here is gonna be probably the loudest sensation in the body. What we're gonna especially look for as we come into the torso is what will feel like either expansion or contraction particularly in the front center. So in the pelvis, it's right where your, your belt buckle would be. Top center of the pelvis. The, the contractions, which are tend to be related to negative emotion. Some other words people might use for it is like clenching, pain, dark, opaque, occasionally numb or absent. And the Sensations associated with positive emotion, they'll just be the polar opposite. They'll be uh, expansion, relaxation, buzzing, bubbly, light, translucent. So we'll look throughout the pelvis and, and we'll particularly look for these either crunching dark or releasing light type of sensation. And we're most likely to find those by your belt buckle. And if you do find any crunching that's easy to relax, go ahead and relax it. But that's really not our goal. Uh, much more so, we just want to note it, map it out. Come next to your belly. The hot spot here is usually right around your belly button. And if you do find any of these crunching or releasing sensations, they tend to be, like I was saying, on the center line, and they tend to be deeper in, as in uh, they won't feel all that close to your shirt usually. In addition to avoiding images of the body, we also want to avoid any uh, mental talk about the body particularly like medical, scientific, um, you know, well, what is this crunching? Um, uh, could this be my sciatica? Uh, we we want to keep away from any of, of that talking about the body. That may happen. Uh, and so we just bring the attention lower. The talk tends to feel like it's happening in your head as well. And if you're finding these releasing sensations, they're usually pretty easy to enjoy, the uh, expansive, luminous sensations. If you're finding the crunchy, tight sort of sensations, one thing that can actually feel nice is, is not trying to heal them. Not as a life plan, but as a thing to do for this sit. Feel really nice to just let them be there and not have to fight them. We'll bring the attention next to the chest. 
The chest tends to be the hot spot in the body for these sorts of sensations. There, there are two hot spots within the overall hot spot. One is the solar plexus. And so, you know, if you touch the center of your chest, it's hard ribs. And you go down to the place where it switches to cartilage. That's one spot. And the other is the, the dead center of your chest, halfway in between your nipples. So certainly the breath for most people is pretty easy to feel here. Now come down to your back. Start with the lower half of your back. Of course, as we get older, many of us have pain in this part of the body. And if you do come across areas of pain, I would give the same advice. Certainly, uh, outside of meditation, you should you know do your physical therapy and and uh, whatever you can to heal the pain. Uh, for right now, tr try not to heal the pain. It's a pretty nice feeling to relieve yourself of having to do anything about the unpleasantness. And if you really can't tell whether something's like an internal sensation of clenching or a organic sensation of pain, just get away from those thoughts. And then come to your upper back. The hot spots on the back are going to be the same as they are on the front, but they, they tend to be subtler on the back. Uh, uh, crunching, releasing sensations are, are often harder to feel from the back than they are from the front.
come next in your hands. Your hands are real tightly clasped. It's, it's easier to unclasp them. And the hands are often like a really nice region in the body to put the attention. There's not usually too much of the expansion contraction. It's usually this like warm, uh, like buzzy, pulsy thing a lot of people report. Include your wrists too. Try to stay as still as you can, so not moving your hands or wrists. And then your forearms. And then your elbows and your upper arms. And then to your shoulders. Most people seem to have like a crunching sort of sensation here. Something almost like, uh, like you're trying to protect yourself. So your shoulders are basically ready to start a fight. So again, if, if they'll easily relax, sure, don't hold them tense on purpose. If they don't easily relax, just hang out and like map, understand. Map, understand, get used to the sensations there. Next, come to your neck and your throat. The hot spot here again is, is right in the center where, um, where the Adam's apple is or, or would be if you had one.
Go to your jaw next. Some of the shoulders, I think the top two places where most people are holding things tightly. And then the remainder of your head. What we want to do next, rather than focusing the attention on one spot of the body, is scan the whole body. Either scan it or, or better yet, if you can hold a broad attention where you're monitoring the body, specifically for the crunching or the releasing. If you don't feel any of that, just stay with the body for now. If it turns out at the end of the sit, you really don't feel any of that anywhere. For most people, what I would suggest is to keep going with that body scan like we just finished for like daily for at least maybe three weeks. Usually then the crunching releasing for most people uh, becomes apparent. Although you do meet the occasional person who just doesn't seem to have those sensations. So the goal is, is uh, bring the attention to whatever contraction or expansion sensation feels loudest, most salient, most important. If there isn't one in this moment, hold the attention monitoring the body to see if one arises.
And for the last part of the meditation, I'll give two directions you can go in. If this crunching releasing thing is, is not really working for you, uh, you're really barely feeling these or not at all. In, in that case, what I would do is just choiceless awareness of the body, meaning go to whatever seems like the loudest body sensation and investigate it. If it goes away or something else becomes louder, go, go there. So you're, you're moving throughout the body based on whatever seems loud, whatever seems important. If you, if you are finding these crunching releasing, what I'd suggest is for the remainder of the meditation, each time you find one, in your head, name the emotion, if you can, behind the sensation. Give it, the, give it the most specific clear name you can. So sometimes the clearest name you can give it is tension. Other times you can see it more clearly. It might be something like anger. And other times you can see it really clearly. You might feel some expansion, some release. Oh, relaxation and peace that I don't have to fix these sensations anymore. Taught noting once before, and, and I, I always like the two-second rules, which are uh, about every two seconds. See if you can name the emotion if you're feeling one. Don't spend more than about two seconds coming up with the label. Just move on. And, and don't make the label itself more than about two seconds long. Otherwise, it starts getting into stories.